Hello everyone and welcome to the second lesson of the third book of the Yard Journey series. As I mentioned before, I will start uploading from the third book all the way to the first and then the other way around and so on. So in the first lesson of this book, I talked about how to look at your reference photo and dissect it into smaller parts before studying the whole thing. In this lesson, I pick up where I left and focus my study even further by only studying a certain part of the reference photo, the part that I'm gonna need for my designs later on. So with the knowledge of how to see different elements in a reference photo, now we can draw one element only that is necessary for our current project. The rest of the reference photo can be discarded not because it's not important to study, it's just because it's not needed right now. For example, if you are working on a character and you are in need to draw a gun, for example, you're gonna go online and collect some images of people holding guns. But you don't need to draw the people holding the guns, you only need to draw the gun itself. Now keep in mind, what you're gonna see me do is study a certain part of a reference and then at the end of each section, I will try to quickly demonstrate how to apply it. But this is not what you should do in your designs. When you study from reference, it's to understand the object you want to draw but never apply it exactly as it is, especially if the reference was from another artist's design, and even if it was from a photo. You have to draw it first from reference, then change it to fit your narrative, style and design. But since this is just the first chapter, I'm not gonna change anything in the design just yet. We're gonna have a long talk about the concept of design in the second chapter. Until then, I'm only gonna try to show you different ways to look at your reference photo and how to understand the reference as you draw it instead of just copying it. So when you see me apply the designs we study on a random mannequin or a design in a comically fast way, don't take this as a final goal. Your final goal is to modify what you study to be yours and in your style. In this lesson, I'm gonna study again five different examples with 10 different photos for each subject, which means there are gonna be 50 different photos in total. The reason why I'm taking so many examples is to show you in order to get the holy grail of a design idea, you need to go big. You need to see a lot of designs to get your mind to work in the right way. Doing two to three studies won't be even enough to get your brain going in the first place. 50 to 100 examples is a good amount for you to get in the zone and start creating. The subjects are figure drawing, character design, animals, mechanical objects, and architecture. We're gonna study a specific element in each category and then try the studied part on a random design to see how the final design will look like. Okay, let's start painting. Okay, for the first section, we're gonna study the figure drawing, but only the hands and the portrait. Let's say you are drawing a figure drawing or a figure pose and you are having a problem with the portrait or the hands. You don't have many options to choose from. So studying only the hands and the portrait from these examples will give us more options to implement in our own drawing. So I'll start drawing the hands. Now I will do a whole series, maybe a few months, weeks from now. I think there is a about 10 or more ways to draw the hands. Every artist have his own way to draw the hands. So maybe I will do a whole series just like the head and the figure, but only for the hands. People kept asking me to do uh, videos about how to draw the hands. So maybe I will get to it sometime soon, I hope. What, what I'm trying to, to get the most out of these reference photos is the, the gesture of the hand, the, the action that is doing more than the details itself. You will see after f after drawing a couple of hands, I will stop going into details. I just need to understand the, the action of the hand itself. But don't forget, uh, drawing from reference for the visual library is, is a good practice by itself, even if you don't do it for the purpose of a design you're working on. Just studying a, a subject by itself is a good habit an artist have to do from time to time. So this is the second hand.
So now the hands are done, let's do the portrait. And as you can see, I'm doing it in the Riley abstraction style. Sometimes I use Riley, other times I use Loomis, sometimes I use a mix between the two. It just depends on the pose, I guess. Now a portrait takes a lot of time to finish, uh, but I'm trying to limit myself between 10 to 15 minutes per study. I don't want to take way more time because the portrait and its detail is not important. It's the character of the portrait and the action of the hands that I'm looking for. Okay, and that's done. Let's do the second example. Now this is a female figure, so even if your design is a male figure design or a male character, you can still study uh, a pose from a female model and then redesign it for your own purpose. You don't have to choose only one gender to, to work with. Any character or any pose will help you from concept art, from figure drawing, man or woman, or even from master art. If you find a figure that is close to what you want, draw it and then re-implement it to fit your own design. So now I'm doing the hands. Again, I'm only given about 10 to 15 minutes to each study. My preferred method to draw the hands is try to simplify it to its basic form, like the box for the palm of the hands and then cylinders for each finger. But hopefully we will talk more about this in its own series. I think I will do about a hundred different examples or something like that. I just know it's not gonna be a simple one. Because I personally still struggle with drawing the hands. They are the most complicated part of the human body. And now the portrait. I think I did this one with the Loomis style or a mix between Loomis and Riley. That's why it's important to study all the methods so you can mix and match in the way that it works with your style.
Okay, that's done. Let's do the third example with another female model. Again, even if you find a, a low resolution picture, you can still manage to understand the, the gesture of the hand or the pose you are working with. So try to fill in the details from your own anatomy and figure drawing and your past visual library studies. And now this uh, side profile. Now I tried to vary the uh, examples I'm working with, so instead of one hand each, maybe I will do two hands together. And you have then to rework the figure or the pose you're working with to make it uh, possible to do the two hands coming together to hold the gun. And now the portrait. I think I did this one with Bridgman and Riley together, I think. Somehow I found Bridgman method works better with a, with a three-quarter view of the hand.
The next example is uh, also two hands together. Well, not practically together, but holding a book and hovering above it. So I decided to do both of them together with the book between them. This pose, by the way, is very common in the concept art for witches or wizards. You can see it a lot. Now the second hand underneath the book is a bit tricky because it's in perspective, so it's foreshortened. And now let's do the portrait. Now this is the same model but from a different view.
And there it is. I just thought six examples is good enough for the first chapter because we have two parts for each. So we have about 12 or more examples. And as you can see, we have six different portraits to choose from and uh, over 10 or 11 hands to choose. So let's see what we can do with all these studies we have. Now remember, as I said, this is not the way to do your designs. You have to change and implement your studies to fit your designs. Don't just copy it and glue it to your character. You have to redesign it and reshape it. But this is just a fast way to show you the options you get after you have a focused study for your designs, not just randomly studying things as you go along. So this is the model I draw for a figure, but without the portrait or the hands. So if you mask the head on the figure, we can start just uh, trying some of the portraits with it and as you can see they really fit really well you just have to change a little bit in the portrait and the figure and you can have a completely new whole new set for your game or for your for your story out of simple study that took around an hour or two so let's say we choose this uh, portrait now we can choose the hand we can put different hands on each side just remember you have to change the pose to fit the arms or they're gonna look really weird but some of the ones i already did fit really well they look like a complete new original uh, character out of uh, just different parts and different sets and that's the whole point of this uh, lesson is to give yourself more options to choose from some people draw characters with the same face over and over the same pose over and over and when i see this i i know right away they didn't do more studies if they do they will have a lot of options to change their poses and their portraits and the way they draw their eyes the way they draw their pose or the hands you just need to give yourself more options and this is the result and as you can see six portraits and 12 hands you can mix and match a lot of positions and options for your characters this way so let's say now we have the pose ready we need to do uh, the armor the torso and the hip part of the armor let's say you have the hands and the legs ready but you still can figure out the chest part of the armor or the weapons, the swords or the daggers or whatever. So let's study some character designs. As you can see here, I'm starting with the torso part of the figure as a base to draw on top of. And I'm only focusing on the torso part. Now remember, these are concept designs for other artists. You are just studying the way the clothes or the armor works. Be careful not to copy it into your designs. You just have to study parts of it and then mix and mash and change and redefine it into your own designs. Something I'm going to talk about more in the second chapter. And I'm also here studying the weapon and making up the parts I can see behind the character. Okay, the next character have uh, very weird armor. I don't think it's uh, covering the important part, especially the chest and the heart. But it's a very cool looking uh, armor nonetheless. And we do the same for the sword, filling in the blanks behind the character. Now the next one is also a female character. Even if you're doing a male character, you can change things to fit your own narrative. But the element of designs are the same for any character. You can always pick up something special from any design you study, either from nature or from other people's work. Just don't copy them exactly. As uh, Picasso once said, good artists copy and great artists steal. And by stealing, you are just taking the essence of the design and changing it so no one knows that you did take it from someone else. And now drawing the sword. And into the next character. This one is very unique design. 
adding fabric to the armor. Now if you are doing a male character, none of this will be beneficial but the, but the curving on the armor or the, the shoulder part with the clothes, that can be another part of your design. Or maybe even a kind of a cape doing the same thing on the shoulder from one side, like Assassin's Creed, the older designs I think. They have a cape from the shoulder only. So you can implement many of this into your own designs. And now in this character have a dagger in the, the left hand and a long sword on the right. You can study both of them. Okay, let's do the next armor. and draw the sword as well. I try to draw it in the vertical position to make the straight lines easier to draw. The next one, I think this is from Heroes of Might of Magic, I think, I'm not sure. But I like the uh, wing on the armor on the left. Now he isn't carrying any weapons, so we'll just do the armor and move on to the next. Another design that we can study with a very large sword and a small dagger. What I'm mostly focusing on in these uh, studies is not the materials or the values or... I'm just taking 10 minutes just to draw the major figure of the design. The layers of the armor and the accessories on top of it. Just to get some idea that we can apply to our own designs later on. Another cool looking design with the with an oriental theme and a lot of accessories that we can use later on with a good looking uh, thief dagger, very stylish and really fun to draw. Another character I think from Assassin's Creed with a very cool design.
Again, no weapons to draw, so we're gonna move on to the next. And the final one, a very nice looking armor that we can use. And as you can see you have around 10 different armors and around 9 different weapons. So let's see what we can do with all these studies. So we have now a, a character with the arms and legs done. But we are still missing the torso armor. This is not the way you should do it. But I'm just giving you an example of what it will look like if you have more options. You can take one element from each of these armors and apply it to your own design. And, and it will be an original design afterward. So... As you can see, they fit perfectly. You can do this very fast and get a lot of design idea as you are working on your own. You can change the swords, you can change the armor and mix and match until you get your own idea of what you want. See, if you study one design, you will have one idea. If you study 10, you will have 10. If you study 100, you will have 100 to pick from. And a design inspired by one idea it's not the same as the design coming from 100 different ideas. The more you vary your ideas and your inspired studies, the more complicated and more original your own design will be. And as you can see here, any, any of the design we worked on can fit perfectly on this character. Of course, after we change and mix and match the whole thing, as I'm going to show you in the second chapter of this series. Okay, let's move on to the animals and see what we can do with them. Now with the animals you can study a lot of different elements, you can study the clothes if you are working on your own mythical animal and you don't know how to fit the clothes to it or the beak. And in this example I decided to take the wing of different types of animals, not only the birds as you can see. Every animal in the animal kingdom have different wings, so you have reptiles with wings, you have birds with wings, you have mammals with wings, as you can see from this example. But also you can go into the uh, bugs and the flies and the butterflies and you have completely different set of wings that you can implement in your own design later on. I'm starting with the base shape of the birds, but I'm not very interested in the details of the birds. I don't, I'm trying to save time as much as possible by just drawing the wings in details and leaving everything else in basic forms. And I'm doing different birds from different sizes and different species just to have a different background to what wings look like in different shapes and different sizes. We don't even have to do birds and now we have fish, the flying fish as it's known. And the wings on the fish is very special, you have, they are transparent but there are some kind of veins inside the, the wings itself like a bat. So you don't have just to study feathered animals like birds, you can get inspired by different species. And as they always say, there is no better designs than the one you're gonna find in nature. They are the perfect design to study.
and here we can see a leather kind of a kind of a attached skin between the arms and legs that makes it jump really high between places that can be considered as a wing as well And here I'm studying the wings of a butterfly that really look nice. You are no longer working with two wings, you are working with two sets of wings on each side. With a very unique shape inside and outside. And finally we have a squirrel, the flying squirrel. And again, this is the inspiration behind the square suit that you see some daredevils skydive with. And it comes from this little creature. And it's a skin between the arms and legs that makes it fly between branches of trees. And here they are, all the wings we studied. Now let's see how we can implement it in our own design. So let's say we have a dragon that we are creating or designing and we are stuck at the wings we don't know what wings we can apply to this mythical creature so we can choose any type of wing that we study but we have to reshape it and just take the concept of the wing and apply it to our design you can turn it you can change it you can shift it you can make it larger or smaller and you already have a design ready to be drawn right on most of the studies that I did work on this uh, creature, even the one that isn't in the same position that you can work on, you can put it on the side and redraw it to fit your character. And even when the wings doesn't work on the side of the character, you can use it on the hands, you can use it on the legs, you can use it on the head, you can use it in any different shape you want. So even one element of the design doesn't have to fit completely, you can reshape it and reuse it the way you want. And weirdly the butterfly wings works the best with this character. And this is a very quick example of what you can do with these. So let's move on to the objects and see what we can study from different designs and how to implement it later on. So with the objects we can study different parts and different uh, little elements that we can use if we want to implement in our own mechanical design. So you don't have to study the whole thing because it's gonna take forever to draw mechanical uh, objects, especially if you want to do it in perspective. So what I'm doing here is a more of a free hand, which is not the best idea for mechanical objects. But again, I'm not trying to draw this perfectly. I'm trying to get the essence of the idea. That's what you have to remember, the essence of the idea so you can use it on your own designs. These things you are studying here will, will stick with you for a long time. So every time you're going to design your own work, you're going to remember to do these certain things while fully understanding the, the mechanism behind it. So you're not drawing it just to look beautiful and spend 3-4 hours. Once you go over an hour drawing these things, your mind will shut off completely. You'll be just automatically drawing it just to make it look pretty. But right here I'm not trying to make it look pretty, I'm trying to just get the idea behind it so I can use it later on. So that's why I'm trying my best not to get over a 10 or 15 minutes where my focus and my conscious is completely with me while I'm painting. The minute I switch off is the minute I change the design and go to another place. The whole point of this is just to be present while you are drawing, while you are studying your object. I'm not drawing the whole thing, I'm just taking two or three elements from each design. And right here I'm drawing uh, an object in perspective but I'm completely free handing it. I'm not trying to put a perspective lines or perspective grid and draw the whole thing. This is not the point here. Just get the idea of your object and move on. And these pictures of uh, car engines and trucks engine is 
a gold mine for all these wires and bolts and cylinders that just you can imagine how many implementation you can use it on mech design, steampunk designs, uh, futuristic uh, robots, all of these you can just create out of these uh, reference photos Try your best to draw all these wires, links, cables. They will do you a lot of good when you try to draw your own mech. You have to use all these wires to connect from one side to the other. It's, uh, it's very good for the overall shape for your object. It's very important to make your the outer shape of your object speak for itself. You don't need it to be very bland or over chaotic so it doesn't look good. So these wires and hanging around from each side give it a, a really really nice and futuristic and logical and organic look to your designs When you come to draw something like this, like a shape rotating around the whole object, all you need is to draw one part of it, then take the pivot point and center it on the circle you are drawing on, and then just rotate the whole shape all over the object, instead of drawing it over and over, and it will never look good if you do it by hand one by one. I just wish Photoshop implement something like a sketchbook when you have these uh, mirroring elements. I don't know if the new Photoshop 2019 I think it might have something like this but my old laptop can't run anything beyond the CS5 so I think the mirroring thing is solved in the new version of Photoshop I'm using the same thing here with rotating object just try to shortcut your drawing as much as possible the idea here is not to make your drawing look good as I mentioned many times the idea here is to capture the essence of the design you are working on
the more you are thinking about these designs, the longer they're gonna stick in your mind to use later on. Honestly, the mechanical objects are the hardest for me to draw because they have a lot of cylinders and circles, but they are the most enjoyable for me, after characters of course. Because of all the wires like, coming in front and on the back, in between, they are really exciting to draw. And a very good exercise to, to practice your perspective in freehand mode. This I think the most complicated shape I drew from all these is the whole... I don't know what that is, it looks like a, like a washing machine or the Hadron Collider or something like that. But it's very complicated and exciting shape to draw. And this is the final image and basically I'm drawing this whole middle object as a unit by itself. And as I said, whenever you see wires, just draw them. You're gonna use them a lot in your own designs. A whole sheet of mechanical objects and wires and cylinders are drawn from a couple of images in less than two or three hours. And now let's see what we can do with them. Now let's say we have this um, cylinder. We need to, let's say it's a part of an engine or a part of a plane and we need it to be filled with mechanical objects or as a cylinder of a steampunk design. So let's try to put things on it. Of course, this is not the way to do it. I'm gonna keep repeating this on every section. It's just an example of what you can do with these studies on your own design, but you have to think more about it. You have to reshape them. You have to actually design your object with the help of these elements, not just copy and paste. But you can see quickly how the whole shape is coming together as if these studies are a part of this object. And you just need to do some tweaks here and there and reshape it and they fit perfectly like it's a part of this design no one will know the original shape that it came from and by the way this is the origin of kit bashing where artists just pick up parts of different designs and photos and just implement it in the final painting but this is the drawing part of kit bashing where you're actually drawing the parts and implement it in your designs this may be a very complicated process, but it's really helpful in the original part of the thinking process of designing your original or initial shape with the help of your studies. So if you're gonna study mechanical objects anyway, make a design out of it. Think of it as a unit with all these little parts coming together. So instead of using one part as we did in the previous sessions, I'm gonna use all the studies all at once. And as you can see, I'm putting something in front of the other part, something in the back, something in between, doing some layering between all these parts so they can look good. And not only just layering, I'm actually thinking about the mechanics of these parts. So I'm putting wheels together with other wheels so you can think of them as if they are rotating and working together in the same element. 
and there's a fan on the front of the object so I'm not just randomly putting everything on the object I'm actually thinking about how they're gonna work together as if someone actually worked on this so if you are working on this you have to think about how these parts even if they don't make sense together you have at least put some effort that they actually work together and again this is not in any shape or way the final process or how you're gonna do it you just have to put this shape on the side and draw the whole thing again inspired more with these different parts now I decided to put this other part a bit away from the main shape I'm still thinking about the whole shape of the object the more uh, parts is sticking out of it the better it's gonna look and then I'm connecting all these wires together so they can make sense at least but this is a very very busy sh looking shape in the end but if you look at it it's, it does make sense as if it's a steampunk object or a futuristic machine that doesn't make any sense but this is just as I said a first step in your design process studying with a purpose instead of studying just random shapes may taking hours to paint a perfect object that you will not do anything with it later on so with that said let's jump into the final section with architecture now in this section I'm gonna only draw the towers in these castles and palaces and buildings I'm only gonna study the tower element of this picture and try to use it later on in the end of the section and as you study these towers you start thinking about what makes the tower look this way what is the purpose of a tower what is the common element between all these towers I'm gonna draw does it have a, a roof does it have a, a small windows rectangular windows it has a base it has a so you start seeing all this common element the more you do this the more you will have your own structure of what towers are and then you can have absolute freedom in your own designs of drawing these towers of your own that doesn't even exist but you have to study the element that makes the tower that what makes a tower looks like this what are the common element as i said between all these towers even if they were futuristic or medieval or gothic they all have the same element that they built on the small windows the roof balconies on top so pay attention to this element as you are studying them and again don't take more than 10 to 15 minutes doing these shapes And it's not just the towers, even the entrance to the building itself can be considered a tower as well. Pick two or three objects from each picture you're studying. And if you don't know how to pick elements, please watch the first uh, lesson I did on how to dissect your uh, reference photo before continuing with this lesson. And as you can see from doing all these towers, they are basically the same concept, the same structure, but just these elements inside of this design are changing from one design to another. Even though there is thousands of years or hundreds of years between all these towers, they are basically the same concept.
And that's what concept art is. It's just the structure of each character are the same, but the elements inside it vary from one design to the other. Again, I'm not focusing on the perspective, I'm freehanding the whole thing. So they may not look 100% exactly like the photo, but for the rest of this book, I'm not interested in drawing things from reference perfectly or 100%. The only thing I want from the reference is an idea that I can use for my own designs. But as for the final one, I decided to do something even completely different, which is studying a futuristic or a sci-fi concept design with these completely different towers. But again, the structure itself is the same. If you see the element of the tower, the small windows, the big base metal object on the top of the tower are completely the same, but in a different design language. But the element itself is exactly the same as all the towers I drew before. But it is a very nice design to study. And as you all know from all the sci-fi movies, the buildings for some reason are the same language in the futuristic art. They all have this geometrical cuts in the buildings, the slanted towers. The, they have a certain design language for sci-fi that you can recognize anywhere, which which makes a lot of sense when you, when you design something for uh, a sci-fi movie. You need the audience to understand the shape language. You don't need to design something that is so foreign, so weird, so alien that the audience won't even have a connection with it. So this is the tricky part of the concept art. You need something familiar that your audience can connect with but not bland or 
repetition from all the designs they do before and in the same time it's not so foreign that they can't even recognize what the shape is or what the function of this building is and that's the balance you have to look forward to all of this I'm going to talk about in details hopefully in the second chapter with the introduction to design probably one or two videos it depends on how long the video will be uh, I'm thinking of probably two to three hours so it's gonna be around two or three videos just for the introduction of design how to design things with with a healthy mentality so you have to divide the shape into large medium or small small for the details medium for in between area and the large so the object can have a, an area where the viewer can rest his eyes on your design so you don't need to make the whole shape the whole character or the whole building completely details from top to bottom it's very tiring to look at it's very not only time consuming but it's too complicated to be understandable or be something good to look at you need some places to rest the eyes on that's where, where the large medium and and small areas comes from also we have the uh, balance of the character if you have to do a large shape from one side you have to balance it either by color or values there's a lot of rules and regulations about the design itself but uh, that's what the second chapter is for for now all you have to do is study the object with an open mind and a conscious mind as you are doing it the title of this chapter is understanding the reference photo and as you can see, these are all the towers we did so far. And now let's see what we can do with them. So let's say we have this building you are designing, but you need some towers on it. And you still didn't decide how to do the towers on the side. So let's try some of the shapes we studied so far. You can use it on the top of the building. You can use it on the side of the building. You can add it as an entrance to the building. And you can see right away, the design is just working with all these different elements. It makes a lot of difference when you add these studies to your work. And you can tell right away from an artist's work if he studies a lot or if he did just few studies and moved on with the design. The more you study, the more complicated your, your final design will be. Some of these design will work, some won't. This entrance looks good with this building, with these towers, and we can also uh, try different towers we can try to make the tower small on top of the building we can make it large and make it uh, like a castle instead of a palace you have a lot of option but when you finally decide on the design set it on the side and redraw the whole thing with, with a better mentality to the architecture to the function of your building that's the most important thing you have to think about the function of your design now i think functionality will be uh, uh, a, sh a whole chapter in the second book so hopefully we're gonna talk about functionality then it will help with the design process a lot so hopefully I will get to do the functionality chapter in book 2 before I get to the chapter uh, the design chapter in the third book of course we're not gonna do this much towers unless this is what you want from your design like a city with many towers like Final Fantasy kind of designs or you can make it simple or you can make it even futuristic with the buildings we did but you have of course to vary a couple of designs of the building you don't have to put it the same everywhere but it still looks good by the way but here's a quick idea of what you're gonna do with it and with that we come to the end of this video uh, the, if you want to take anything from it is make your studies work for your designs what I used to do before I got into all this I used to separate between my studies and between my designs and that's why my designs never worked because I didn't put the studies I did into it I just did the studies to make it look good and post it on Facebook and whatever and this is the wrong way to do studies studies are for you only no one have to see them no one should see them it's for your own good it's for your own process that's why Michelangelo never showed people his uh, his process because all his studies he actually burned most of his studies because he didn't want anyone to see his process but you can see that he drew a lot of figure drawings and then implemented right into his painting and that's the whole point of studying and the visual library is you study to implement in your designs if you're studying just for sake of studying you will not get anything out of it and you will forget it right away especially if you are spending two or three hours on one single idea you will not remember it afterward and you will not use it in your 
in your design and if you did use it you're gonna use it exactly like the picture which is a big mistake people are gonna tell right away where you get it from and who you stole it from and this is not the right way to steal an art you have to steal the spirit of the idea not the idea itself and make it work in your own design as if you came with the idea yourself so hopefully you're gonna do the same with your studies and your designs okay and that was the lecture part of the video now let's talk about the homework for this lesson homework there's again two modes to follow either an easy mode or a hard mode for the easy mode just take one subject from the ones we talked about and uh, search for five different reference photos for it and study two to three parts in that reference photo as for the hard mode you can study all five subjects that we talked about and get anywhere between five to ten different reference photos for each subject and study two to three different parts in that reference photo and for extra points try to apply all these different parts you studied into one single design happy drawing i hope you liked this video and before i go i like to thank my patreon and if you want to support this channel you can go to patreon.com slash rainwalker thank you all for your generosity this is it for this second lesson in the first chapter of the third book next video will hopefully be uh, the second lesson in the second book of this series or i'm gonna do a figure drawing practice first someone asked me about the uh, figure drawing with the jack ham method and uh, i think they require some more examples for the figure drawing i think i'm gonna do figure drawing in three different methods just as a practice uh, andrew loomis uh, riley and jack ham maybe five five then i think it's more a practice for me but uh, at the same time it will be good to see more examples for the figure drawing series so either that or the second book i will do both together and we'll see which one i finish first so anyway with that said i hope you found this video useful for you and for your studies thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video